Yo, Adam Saxon, Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup. We made it to the end of April 2020. Whew. Got some awesome community posts along with some cool things from Microsoft. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Reed Havens has got another blog slash video looking at building out a custom KPI with a very cool color data bar. Thing I love about Reed's videos and items is his videos, they look pretty sharp. They're very clean. I like the aesthetic. It's, it's really cool to see what you can do with a report. And what Reed is doing in here is similar to a video that Patrick had done a while back, but it's this idea of building out a KPI that meets the needs of your business or whatever it is, you're tr the problem you're trying to solve. And so the default KPI that's in the product may not help you. And so Reed walks you through how you could create a custom one based on whatever your data needs are. I love seeing this kind of creativity with Power BI. So Reed, big kudos. The year 2020 will be remembered by most everyone just because of the whole coronavirus and it really shifted the world and everything about our lives. And one thing it did impact are the live and in-person events. So a lot of these have transitioned to virtual events and the Austrian Azure or sorry, the Austrian Global Azure 2020 event is no different. And my friend Wolfgang Strasser had a presentation where he looked at power platform data flows and walk through what this is, how you can use it. So it's something that's available online. If you want to go check it out, definitely recommend looking at it. If you want to learn more about data flows, Wolfgang is an awesome presenter, very knowledgeable, and I definitely recommend checking it out. You can check out the link for it down in the description below, along with links to all the items from this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. Evan Rhodes at Power Pivot Pro has got a blog looking at the FAQ page of a given report or someplace where you can go get more information about what the report's doing. One of the things I liked in this blog post is he calls out the main point that, look, your data or your report page should be self-explanatory, right? If you have to explain it, it's probably something you can optimize or tweak to get the right meaning across. But as he calls out, there's some times where people just want to know a little bit more information. Maybe there's an actual description of how that data came to be or something about, you know, your data dictionary or something of that nature. Maybe explaining what this KPI, how that formula really is put together. This is where an FAQ page can come in handy on, in a given report. He shows you how you can do it as a separate page and even have buttons and bookmarks to interact with items for display purposes. This is also something you could just have on your main report page as well. Maybe just a little question mark icon in a lower corner. You click on that, it gives descriptors for items, or you can have a full FAQ page like Evan shows you if you want to have a more descriptive uh, way of telling that information. So it's a very cool thing to keep in mind when you're building reports inside of Power BI and to help people understand the data that they're looking at. Microsoft has really been helping out with coronavirus and COVID-19 relief and just in all different ways, not just monetary. And the group inside of Microsoft AI for Health is doing a lot, uh, hopefully for obvious reasons. One of the items that was presented on the AI for Health page is a new coronavirus report that Microsoft is publishing. It's a combination of world data plus United States specific data. And you can go and check out this report. It's actually a Power BI published to web report that's inside of a web page. And it's a pretty cool report. I, the thing I love about this report is it really highlights not, not only the, I mean, you're going to get great information in terms of the coronavirus situation, but looking at it from a Power BI perspective specifically, it shows you a lot of the capabilities of what you can do with Power BI. And there are no custom visuals in this report. This was all just using what's available inside of Power BI today. And shout out to Miguel Myers, who is the one that designed this report. He is an amazing report designer, and he, I know he spent a lot of time on this given report. The thing I love is uh, when you go to the tab that has the, the trending in the line chart, uh, you look at that and you're like, man, how did he do that? And one of the things he had actually told me was he, I think it's a combination of like five or so different visuals layered on each other. So it's, it's just an illustration of 
you can get this stuff to look a certain way if you can play around with different visuals. Think outside the box a little bit. Don't just go with a static line chart. Maybe there's another way you can illustrate that by layering some of those line charts. So check it out, links down below in the description. Hopefully, I'm hoping at some point they will actually publish either this Power BI desktop file or a version of it that has, that's easy to consume from a data perspective. And so that you can go and take a look and see how he actually designed this report. Cause I think it's a really good case study for report design if you can, and if they end up letting you get your hands on it so that you can explore it a little bit more. So, but good job, Miguel. Great job, Microsoft. This is an awesome report. There's a blog post out on the Power BI blog, which is actually a case study of a customer, in this case, Rockwell Automation. And this blog is just kind of a teaser that links off to the larger case study itself. Lauren Faber is the person at Microsoft that put this together. She is on the Power BI CAT team and she does an amazing job of putting these together. These are not easy to put together. They, they may seem like it's not a lot of work, but it's she puts a lot of time into this and the folks that she works with to get this information set. There's a lot of thought that goes into this. There's a lot of, you know, how do we actually communicate and show that with inside of the case study. So these are really good. Rockwell Automation is one of them. There are several others. And I know she's continuing to work on more to, to get those out. So definitely take a look at this, see how Rockwell Automation is using Power BI to bring their organization forward. And hope maybe you can gain some insights and figure out how to use that with your organization. All right, I wanna hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video. GIACstore.com.